you. All right, you've heard about the pro-Palestinian demonstrations, a lot of them at some of our most prestigious colleges. Well, Brandeis becoming the first right now, talking about Brandeis University of Massachusetts, uh, to say enough already, the first private university to ban a controversial group, Students for Justice in Palestine, thanks to largely this gentleman's efforts. He's been leading this nationwide, Adam Gallat, the president of Accuracy in the, med- in the Media. Uh, Adam, very good to have you. Um, so far, I think Brandeis stands out for doing this, but it, 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 it's the only major one that I, I know of. But it's a start. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? Well, I'm for free speech, even when it's hateful, even when it's anti-Semitic. I think one of the great benefits of free speech is it enables us to know who the hateful anti-Semites are. And that's essentially what our campaign is. We are amplifying their message so that people can know who the anti-Semites are in their community and on their campus. All right. Now, a lot of people feel that they have a scarlet letter on them if they did protest and that now we're hearing from a lot of alumni who graduated from these institutions, big donors to those institutions saying, we would never hire them in a blue moon. Forget about it. Um, is that fair? Well, I think people should be held accountable for their actions. These bullies don't understand appeasement. They only understand when they're held accountable. And we're not saying don't hire these people per se. We're simply providing them with the information. We don't go after casual leaders. We don't go after people who were at a protest. We go after people who signed hateful, anti-Semitic proclamations and were the leaders of these organizations. And whenever they apologize, we take them off our billboards and off our website. Could you explain what you have to endure to- just raising these issues. Um, you're, you eloquently laid out the idea that you're for free speech. You just have to stand by whatever speech you're freely making. But it's boomeranged on you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I've had two weeks of threats. I was assaulted at Harvard, and I've been swatted now four times. The first time a half a dozen armed officers came into my home. Thankfully, my wife and I were out of state. Had we been there and acted the wrong way, we might have been killed. More recently, my parents got the exact same treatment. Could could you explain what swatted means? They called local law enforcement in my town and said that I had a gun to my wife's head. I see. And then a half a dozen heavily armed officers go into your home with rifles. You move the wrong way and they just might kill you. The second time they said I killed my wife and someone else in our home. That's the kind of people we're dealing with. So when there are multiple calls like that that they're getting by the third or fourth one, do they say, all right, this this is not real? Or do they have to come? They still have to come. Now, they haven't asked to go inside for the third or fourth attempt, but they're still on the scene before they even call me and notify me. And I guess that's good. If I called 911, I would still want them to show up. But now they may be hesitant to do so. So in many ways, it still puts me in danger. Do you explain what's going on here to them? And then what do they say? Oh, that's interesting. What do you do about that is one thing that an officer asked me recently. I was hoping they might have the answer. It's truly outrageous that we're dealing with this sort of thing in America from people who claim to be the victim. All right. But but that's behavior that cannot be tolerated. That's dangerous. It could lead to a dangerous incident. Do you think people who make those calls, it's one thing to have a view, a pro-Palestinian view, but another to make calls like that. Um, that, 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 that's a criminal act. In Florida, they could get 20 years in jail for it. I think the FBI now has a national database that is supposedly going to help resolve this sort of thing. But you're absolutely right. Obviously, for me and for anyone else who's experienced this, I would want the weight of law enforcement to trace these people. And I think some of that is happening, but I'm also out of my own pocket, my organization's pocket. We're spending a ton of money on legal resources to research it on our own. It's very scary stuff. Adam, thank you. Keep us posted on how this campaign is going. And Adam does raise a good point. You're free to speak your mind in this country, but you are also free to suffer the fallout if some people think you've lost your mind in the process. We'll have more to this.